plan. Hello and welcome into a brand new video series from yours truly. In our oh, so don't mind the Halloween decorations. It's Halloween time. If you're watching this after Halloween, we're we're doing spooky streams right now. Um, so in stream, a lot of the questions I get from newer players is how do I win this game? What are some tips you have? for me, and I always recommend that somebody plays Rome because it's a really good starting civilization. So what I've decided to do is play one game with Rome on regular Prince difficulty on a regular map, just a Pangea map, a small Pangea map, no crazy settings, no, everything is standard, no secret societies, none of that, just a regular game of Civ with Rome going over all the different victory types and each of those victory types will be broken down into three videos covering the first 100 turns, turns 100 to 150, and turns 150 to 200 and it'll be cut to kind of emphasize and show you how to win each of the different victory types with Rome in a game of Civ just so you can kind of wrap your head around my approach, how I approach the game and how I win with the same leader but with all the different victory types. This video here is going to cover the first 100 turns of a culture victory with Rome. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think of this series in the comments. We're going to do one for each victory type. So anything I can improve when we do the science victory or the domination victory or the diplo victory, feel free to let me know in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy this type of series. I'd really, really appreciate it. Also, also, we stream Civ a few days a week live at twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. That link is in the description below. Feel free to check out the live stream for real time tips, tricks, and deity action. But this is a regular game as Rome on Prince, a perfect setup for a new player. Nothing fancy pantsy going on. And we are going to win the game for a culture victory with Rome. Welcome to the first 100 turns. All right, so we are here in game with Rome trying to win a culture victory. Smack dab on turn one. Our first 100 turns are going to be spent setting up our empire for success. We need to scout all the lands. We need to meet all the other players. We need to settle most of our cities. We need to start planning out which districts we want to be placing where. And most of that happens in the first 100 turns. And that starts with your capital city. So you'll see a common theme in any Civ tutorial. You always want to start with a great capital city. Now you might be asking what makes a great capital city. I have a tutorial on it. There are lots of videos around the internet. I'll link a few of them in the description. Right? But mainly what we're looking for, this is my second reroll. The reason why you want a good capital city is because it's with you the whole game. If your game takes 200 turns, this first city produces with you for all 200 turns. But some of the things that uh, I'm looking for here that are really good, we're settling on fresh water, which is awesome as Rome. All right, we have a 2-2 tile right here. It's a plain till, so when I settle this tile, my city center is gonna get the two food and two production. I have a 3-2 tile and a 2-2 tile to work after that. So I have a good starting tile, fresh water, I can settle on turn one, and I have a bunch of good tiles to settle around it. This is not the best start ever. There are better possible starts, but hey, we're gonna have some fun. I don't wanna sit here re-rolling forever, so this is a great start for us. Before we get going, we also need to take a look at what Rome does. What is Rome going to do for us in all of these tutorials to help us win a game of Civ? Um, the first thing is Trajan's Column. All cities start with an additional city center building. That'll be a monument. So early on for us, a little bit of culture is really, really nice, right? But it's good to know that each city center is going to have that building in there so I don't have to build it. This is one of the reasons why Rome is great for newer players. All roads lead to Rome. All cities you found or conquer start with a trading post. Now this is... is more advanced stuff but all you need to know is that trading posts will allow us to trade farther and will give us more gold um, for some of our trade routes which is nice if in the trade route range of your capital so that starts out as 15 tiles but as we go through that um, with the trading post that extends the range but for the first city it'll be 15 tiles if within trade route range of your capital, they also start with a road to it. So if you settle your first city within 15 tiles of your capital, there will be a road connected to it automatically, which is great. Your trade route, your trade routes earn plus one gold for passing through trading posts in your own cities, right? So it's really good to know as you're trading throughout the map um, to see if you can navigate them through your own cities to, to collect that plus one gold. Our military unit is the Roman Legion. We probably won't be using that too much this game, but it's good to know that it's there and that it exists and it can build a Roman fort. Cool beans. 
We also have the bath right here, a district unique, unique to Rome for city growth, replaces the aqueduct district and is cheaper to build. All right, so it provides the city with a source of fresh water from an adjacent river, lake, oasis, or mountain. This is pretty much just your standard aqueduct, and I probably won't be building a lot of them. I'm going to build one for era score for sure, but mostly if you settle on fresh water, you don't really need too many aqueducts, right? But we will talk about these baths if I build one that I think is, is kind of not normal or in a situation that I think it makes sense. But it's good to know that just because this is your unique district that you don't need to build it in every city. Well, I, can, I can't imagine us building much more than one or two. Um, and so it's good to just have that mindset going in like, hey, this is my unique district and this guy's already telling me that maybe it's not the best to build in this game, right? So it's good to, it's good to wrap your head around that, that just because something's unique to you doesn't mean it's always the best way to win the game. All right, so we are going to settle Rome right here, get our error score, which is awesome. For our initial research path... I am partial towards doing animal husbandry into archery. I really think that's a good way to kind of help you stay safe in your game, especially if you are the type of person that struggles with barbarian. Pottery and mining are also good. We have these diamonds down here we might want to mine eventually, but they're not really close to us. We have irrigation right here if we want to pick up this cocoa, which would be great. I think on the whole though, it helps me plan my cities a little more if I know where the horses are going to be. So we'll go into animal husbandry first. I am going to build a scout right away. It is so important in your games to scout the land. Information is power. The more land you can see, the more people you can meet, the more you can scout in the early game, the more information you are going to have to make your best decisions. So we are going to go with a scout first. We have just met Nan Madal, which is a great city-state to have next to us because it is a culture city-state. So that's obviously going to help us a little bit with our culture victory. You can see because we have the plus one envoy that we've met them first, so nobody else has met Nan Madal. When you meet a city-state for the first time, it's always nice to check the quest. Send a trade route. So this is perfect. Look at that. It's within 15 tiles. It's a nice, easy route. Um, so far, there's no barbarians on the way. So this should be achievable for us. We should be able to get a second envoy in there pretty easily. And then you always want to check the suzerain bonus. All right, these bonuses here are going to be the same for every culture city-state. But this one here, your districts on, on or next to coast or lake tiles provide plus two culture. Right, so Nan Madal allows us to build districts next to coast or lake tiles and get plus two culture, which might come in handy for us. So it's not something I immediately want to hop onto, but it is good to know um, that Nan Madal can be helpful for us. All right, so we've discovered a barbarian scout here. I'm just going to try and keep it away from my capital as we find another scout. So the way scouts work is once they see you here, they're going to go back to their encampment and tell all of their friends that you exist, right? So I'm trying to keep this scout away from my capital. This one's already seen me, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. I'm sure we'll figure it out. We have just got Code of Laws, so I'm going to throw in Discipline. We know we're going to fight those barbarians we just mentioned, and you always, 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 always want to go God King first to get plus one faith. Our Pantheon is going to be super important in this game, and getting up to 25 faith for that is essential. So we are going to try and go into Archery here. There's nothing else here that I really need right now. Um, so we're going to try and go into Archery here. We found the encampment, so I'm going to try and get a kill with the Slinger to try and boost Archery and get half of the cost for absolutely free. With our civics tree here, there's a few places we're going to want to head right away. We're going to want to start expanding our empire, so early empire is really good for us to start getting 50% production towards settlers. Um, obviously, a government plaza would be nice. Heading down to our next government is obviously great as well. Also, drama and poetry is a must for us because we are going to need theater squares. Now, we don't need theater squares as early as you think we might need theater squares to, to, to pull off this culture win. Um, but it is kind of good to know what your general path is going to be. Early empire feels really good. Political philosophy and drama and poetry feels really good. We know we're going to get a pantheon to boost mysticism, so no reason to go there yet. We're probably not going to boost craftsmanship. I can't see a situation where I improve three tiles before I, sh I should probably get this. We'll head into in early empire first, though, because I don't know... Um, I don't know how quickly we're going to be able to grow to six population. So I think we'll go halfway through early empire and then make a decision then about whether we think we can boost it the rest of the way or if we're just going to hard tech it, which means you go through the whole thing without getting the boost. 
So we just ran into Arma, and Arma is a first meet over here. So we're getting plus one faith. That'll help us get to our Pantheon just a little bit quicker. Again, Arma's uh, uh, builder or unique bonus is probably not going to be too helpful. But it is good to know that no one's run into Arma over here yet. But someone has run into a Cod over here. It makes me think that we're going to have a pretty easy time settling over in this direction and a more difficult time settling over in this direction. The and there is our archery boost. So I was able to kill a scout with a slinger as expected. And so we got our archery um, for, for half cost. Look at that. One of the things you should always be doing as you're scouting around the map is just pinning things that look good. Right, so I see this plus four campus here and I go, hey, that campus looks really good. That might be something we wanna, we wanna do. With that, yeah, I know if I put a commercial hub next to a river, which one is right here, that gets a plus two. So that's a decent commercial hub. And in between that, I can put a theater square. I know we're going to need theater squares to win this game. And so a theater square right in between there will get a plus one boost for being between two districts. Now, I don't have to commit to this. A lot of people kind of see their pins as something they're committing to. It's definitely uncommittal. You can get rid of them real quickly, but it's just good to know like, hey, I saw this thing and I kind of want to plan on this, especially now that I'm moving a settler around to settle a second city, right? Having a plan down here might make me more likely to come down here and realize that plan than if I was just winging it and I hadn't really thought about it ahead of time. Now that I've thought about this city a little more, the Oracle is a really good wonder for early culture victories. I recommend it in almost every game anyway. There's a few things you're looking for in an Oracle city. First, an Oracle city needs to have a lot of districts. What the Oracle does, among, uh, among a lot of things, gives you extra great person points. So having these districts with all their buildings gathering great person points for this uh, Oracle to add on to is really, really nice. The Oracle needs to be built on hills, and so we built it right here on these hills, or we're hoping to build it right here on these hills, and that'll be right next to this theater square. So now that plus one theater square becomes a plus three theater square. In addition to that, it'll help us get great writer points, great artist points, um, everything we kind of need to start rolling with a culture victory here. Also, it gives us a little bit of tourism and appeal and makes our city a little bit bigger as well. All of things we'll talk about later, but things that we know we're gonna need for a culture victory. So the barbarians seem content on just hanging around Rome, which is awesome. I'm just gonna make the great escape with this settler to come down here. They cannot take Rome. I have nothing for them to pillage in Rome. So even though it looks really scary, I am not at all phased. These barbarians can, can hang out here forever. If anything, I'm just gonna get a bunch of promotions on my military units, and that's gonna be great for me. Choosing your Pantheon is a big moment in any Civ game. For a culture victory, I, I know exactly where I want to go, and I want to go with Earth Goddess. So let's talk about Earth Goddess. Earth Goddess and Religious Settlements are probably the two best Pantheons in the game. 1A, 1B, kind of depending on what you need. As you increase the difficulties, I don't even think I can get Religious Settlements in this game, and we're on Prince. Yeah, Religious Settlements is already gone, which is an indication somebody in this game has a lot of faith really early to be able to get up here and take that. So I'm thinking Russia, Jadviga, um, little, little context clues like this can actually help you kind of suss out who might be in the game. Here's what Earth Goddess does. It gives you plus two faith from tiles with breathtaking appeal. So this is a very cyclical relationship and a very symbiotic relationship here within Earth Goddess that you are going to want to have. So we are gonna take Earth Goddess plus two faith from tiles with breathtaking appeal. So the first thing we wanna consider here is which tiles have breathtaking appeal. You can go over to your lens and you can go to um, your appeal lens here. I have it just bound to my uh, one key here. And so anything with breathtaking appeal will come in that dark green that kind of shows you in the key up top. And if you have a breathtaking appeal tile within your city, uh, that tile will give you plus two faith. It has to have yields. It can't be these mountain tiles. It has to have yields, right? So as we go through the game, we are going to want to have as many breathtaking appeal tiles as possible to get as much faith as possible and as few uh, other appeal tiles as possible, which leads us to go to the appeal screen. I am fairly familiar with how appeal works and what things I need to do to either increase the appeal of my tiles or decrease the appeal of my tiles. And so all of that information is right here. It's good to take a read on it, right? It's good to know that plus one tile, plus one if the tile is on a river or a lake, plus one for each adjacent holy site, theater square, entertainment complex, canal, dam, or wonder. Right, so earlier I said the Oracle was going to give us a little bit of appeal and a little bit of tourism, and that's where I got that appeal. 
thing from, but it's also good to know what is going to dis decrease our appeal because we want to avoid those things. Now that we know we want high appeal because that'll give us faith, we'll talk about what to use the faith on in a minute, right? But I don't want to build mines, quarries, or, or oil, or wells, oil wells, airstrips. I don't want any pillaged tiles. That one's obvious. But no rainforest, marsh, or floodplains. So if I see rainforest, marsh, or floodplains, I kind of want to try and get rid of them if I can, right? Uh, floodplains much harder, but like rainforest and marsh, those are things I can get rid of to get rid of the negative appeal that those give off, right? So there are things you can do to adjust the appeal. I will go over them as I'm doing them just to make sure you guys are all in the loop. But what are we going to spend faith on? Faith is crucial to a culture victory. Absolutely crucial. And as you can see with this early planning, I'm not too keen on holy site districts. I don't really want a religion. If I get a religion, it means I have to spend my faith on religious units to keep that religion going, which I don't really want to do. Now, opinions may vary on that. I've seen a lot of early culture ones go for a religion. I just don't like to do it, right? But we are going to need national parks and rock bands. So national parks require you to spend faith on naturalists, which costs, let's see if we can pull those up. Here is your naturalist, a late game civilian who can create a single national park to attract tourists. We'll talk about tourists later, right? But I know I'm gonna wanna spend faith on that, which is awesome. So I know we need faith to buy these. Here are your rock bands as well. We'll talk about rock bands when we get to them later in the game, but we know we're gonna need these as well. And these cost faith. So I'm gonna need faith to buy rock bands and naturalists. And I'm not building holy sites or a lot of them anyway. We'll probably build a few. But I need another way to get faith, and Earth Goddess provides that. Additionally, Oracle makes the patronage of great people cost 25% less faith. So if I have a lot of faith from Earth Goddess, and I don't have anything to spend it on until later in the game, I can buy all the great people I want because they'll cost a lot less faith for me to buy than they'll cost the AI. So Earth Goddess all the way, an easy choice for us this game. So there's a few options here in your civics tree. We hard teched early empire. We just didn't think we were gonna get the boost. And with the extra culture from our monuments, we were able to get there pretty quickly. I still have hope that we'll, we'll boost craftsmanship, but I don't think we'll boost it in time. We could head down to mysticism for the envoy, which is really nice. We're also gonna need, head down there, need to head down there to get the oracle. The thing with the oracle is I don't really have a spot to build it quite yet. And so it'll take a few turns. We could also head to political philosophy. The problem with going political philosophy right now is that if I click that you'll see it takes me through the path and it means I go through these without boosting them whereas if I go to mysticism right now it's already boosted we found it our pantheon so I think this is the safest play just because it's already boosted it gives us more of an opportunity to boost these uh, civics up here but also it unlocks the oracle for us right away which is something we are going to want to prioritize and the envoy's nice our first governor selection is upon us there's two really good options for us right now we could go with magnus magnus will give us extra um yields if we chop tiles this is really good especially because we're probably going to chop out the oracle if you don't know what chopping is we'll talk about it in a few minutes Right, Magnus is really good. Also, getting down to provision here, the second promotion, means that we do not consume a population when we build settlers. Obviously great if you're expanding. I think on the whole, though, since we're focusing on Oracle, we want to get Pingala um, down to Grants, which will synergize really well with the extra great person points we're going to get from the Oracle. So Pingala down to Grants is kind of going to be our focus. So we'll appoint Pingala. Um, I'm going to appoint Pingala to Rome. Pingala is going to move immediately to this city over here the second we settle it, though. It's not going to stay in Rome because this is the city that's going to have the Oracle in it. Also, this city is going to be losing population by building settlers all the time, which isn't ideal in a city that gives you science and culture based on how high your population is with Pingala. With all the barbarians still knocking about, we are going to go with Garrison here for our promotion. It'll give us 10 combat strength if we attack with this archer from the city here, which will kill these in, in pretty much one or two hits. We're also going to build one more archer here for a little bit of defense, and then I feel pretty good about our position to build more settlers and keep expanding our empire. I am going to head into writing now. I feel pretty good about our ability to boost writing. I think we're kind of heading towards another civilization that we know is around the Akkad area. Right. Also, bronze working is already boosted, which is nice. I just don't think we need it right now. And I feel good about boosting this. And again, just giving myself the opportunity to still boost irrigation. We're not going to have a builder for a little bit unless one pops up in a goodie hut. And so I don't really need to rush irrigation. I'm not going to have a builder to, to get the cocoa anyway. 
All right, as you can see, we have settled our second city of Kumai down here, or Kume, I don't know how you pronounce it, but you can see there's automatically a road built between them. Normally, you have to use traders to get your roads, but that means we can move um, um, quite, a, quite a big distance along these roads, which is really nice. Also, you'll see that if I go to build a monument, I cannot because the monument's already in our city center, already giving us more culture than we had before, which is awesome for our victory condition here. As you can see, as expected, there are borders of an empire over here, so I suspect we are about to run into a, a friend. Cyrus, so when you meet when you meet people in Civ, you kind of want to see what is their MO. Cyrus, we know, is really good at culture and killing people. Those are kind of his two big things. And so we're going to try to avoid getting killed by Cyrus. And we are going to try and avoid him getting too far ahead in a culture game. With a culture game, we'll talk about why later, right? You can also see we boosted writing exactly as expected. You really want to make sure that you are friendly with people. You will need to be able to send trade routes to every civilization in the game and have open borders with everyone in the game. You cannot do that if you are at war with them, so try your best to be friendly with people. Some of the ways you can be friendly early on include sending a delegation, which we are going to do. It costs 25 gold. It's very, very helpful. Sending a trade route is a good way to be friendly. Open borders is a good way to be friendly. If you would like to know, I believe it's this heart one here, right? Reasons for our current relationship. Plus three, we sent them a delegation. They're happy with a first impression of me. To raise your relationship, we could offer a trade route, establish a trade route, or offer a favorable trade, establish a trade route, grant open borders. So all the things I just mentioned, but they're right here for you if you click this little heart icon if you would like to see how to be friendly with each individual Civ. That being said, I am going to offer open borders to him right away. He is going to give me two gold for that uh, pleasure, right? But it'll help boost our relationship with him, and I want to be friends with Cyrus early on. We might we might want to kill him later, probably not, but we we'll, we'll want to be friends early. We don't want to start this uh, on the wrong foot here. Okay, now we have a Pantheon, so God King can get out of here. We don't need the plus one faith or gold anymore. I'm going to build one more settler here to get a third city down. I always try and shoot for three cities by turn 50. That's usually achievable on almost any difficulty in almost any game. Three cities by turn 50 and eight to 12 by turn 100. 12 is really hard to hit, but three cities by turn 50, eight to 12 probably closer to eight by turn 100 is kind of where I want to hit for establishing my empire. So I'm going to put colonization in so I can build one more settler with plus 50% production towards it. We have not yet been able to boost craftsmanship. I really don't think it's going to happen. We, we still might hold out hope that we can boost state workforce, but we need to go towards our government because the classical Republic government gives us plus 15% great person points. And you want to have that available to you the second you start building your district. So every great person point you collect, you boost on top of that, boost with Pingala, boost with Oracle. That reminds me. See, even I can mess this up. Let's move Pingala down. It's not important right now, but let's move uh, Pingala down to Kumai to make sure Pingala is ready to go when we have districts there we want to build. With Garrison, you can see in the bottom corner, it's just so destructive to have a garrisoned archer in your cities. You can just snipe barbarians so easily. I recommended this strategy to anyone who freaks out about barbarians because we, we had a pretty good siege going on there for a minute and it really didn't phase me at all. So it's good to kind of understand how barbs work and some of your best strategies for, for preventing them from doing a lot of damage. And Garrison is one of them. We have met Jad Vega. <laughs> Jadviga is really good at religion and killing people. So we're going to try not to die. I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But just like... How did you not see this goodie hut? Okay, well, whatever. Um, just like Cyrus, we want to be friendly with these guys. So we're going to send a delegation. I'm going to offer open borders. You know? I think that's great. Please be happy with me. And we'll work from there. Our scout is dead. Our scout is dead. I'm a terrible person. I'm so sorry. You didn't deserve that, man. It's just, it's just so sad. Mega Colossal Eruption. <laughs> That's so ridiculous, man. Get your, get your, uh, get your garrison archers. Just do it. Just do it. Every game. There's not a single game where you shouldn't be getting garrison archers. Awesome. No reason not to go for irrigation now that it is boosted. What a hero that goody hut was. <laughs> this is literally the next turn. This volcano's on a rampage. Now that tile, oh my God. 
Okay, we're we're getting this tile come hell or high. Our next city's going right here. Five production, five food, three gold on one tile under a volcano. You'll love to see it. In the top right, you can see we have a big smiley face with Cyrus now. That is awesome. We are going to declare friendship, and he is going to be happy with that. That'll that'll make sure he can't kill us for the next 30 turns or so, which is awesome for us. So clearing barbarian camps is really, really helpful for you in the early game. It gives you era score. It gives you gold. It gives you a bunch of good stuff here. That gold is going to be helpful for us because we are actually going to buy a trader with that gold and send that trader to Nan Madal. Earlier, remember, I'm um, sending a trader to the city-state gives us an envoy, and we are one. One envoy away from being the suzerain of Nan Madal. That'll give us some vision of this area as well. But it'll also give us dis like it'll give us culture if we build any districts next to any lake tiles. Not something we're planning on now, but it's a good early boost for us, and it'll also give us a little more error score too. I feel pretty good about where we're at city-wise. I don't need to rush settlers out. We have room for a few really good cities in here. So I'm actually going to go for this campus early. It's a nice plus three campus. It's going to get our science ahead. And you might be thinking, should I not be focusing on culture all the time? We're trying to go for a culture win. So much of a culture win is in science, right? There's a priority kind of tier list of things you're going to go for. And we'll go over it again later, right? But if you go down your science tree all the way down here to computers... These computers, plus 25% tourism across your empire, you're going to want to get here. If you would like the Eiffel Tower, something that's absolutely crucial to the kind of gameplay we're going for, um, steel, you need to get here. And you, you can only get there if you have a high amount of science. So science is equally as important. Printing as well, that gives you more tourism and gives you Forbidden City if you want to get Forbidden City. And so there's so many places on the science tree you still need to get to for a culture win. And you need a high amount of science to get there as well. So do not ignore science. Um, just because it's not a science victory you're going for. We have our trader now. We have just purchased it with our gold. We are going to send that to Nan Madal. That'll create a road here. Normally, you want to focus on, with your early trade roads, what roads they give you. If you want to attack uh, Cyrus at some point, you're going to want a road that takes you to Cyrus a little bit easier. Um, but for us, we want to head to Nam Madal. We already have roads between our cities, which is awesome just because we're Rome. Getting a road up here isn't that important. But as you can see with this exclamation point, if you didn't actually check the quest, you know that sending it to Nan Madal is going to give us that envoy, which is really important for the suzerainship of that for us in the early game. There it is. So we have our era score for being the first in the world to seize Nan Madal. Our knowledge of currency has increased because we are uh, because we sent a trade route out. Sorry, but also now we get a lot of vision. This is a great little city up here, Ruhr Valley. Great campus. Ooh, so a lot of things uh, intensify up here. I'm just like so many things are going through my head. Ruhr Valley is not one of them because this is a culture game. We probably don't need it, but still, but still, there's so many things with this vision that I can now use to make good decisions. Also, this city down here is bonkers. We are 100% settling on this plane, one of these two Plains Hill tiles here, and are just gonna have an absolute crack in time with this volcano that keeps erupting and making these tiles amazing. And it just keeps going, it never ends. Oh my, I'm so happy. Yo, these tiles are so freaking good. This is gonna be the best city ever, you guys. This is gonna be the power, the, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. This city, we're gonna change its name to mitochondria, the powerhouse of the empire. This is incredible. Now that currency is boosted, it's a great place to head. We're gonna want a lot of commercial hubs. A lot, a lot of commercial hubs. Commercial hubs with markets give you trade routes. We are going to need trade routes for a culture-based reason. We will talk about when it happens, but it is really good to know that currency is, is very helpful for us. So heading there is great. Part of why I don't wanna to go to bronze working is if I reveal iron and iron comes up in a place where I have planned a district, I can no longer put a district there. So the last thing we want is for iron to come up on one of these really important tiles for our district plan and, and us not be able to work around that anymore. Pachacuti! Hello, friend! My man. How are you? We're gonna be friends with Pachacuti. Let's be friends with Pachacuti. How friendly do we want to be? I got a lot going on. Cyrus already at nine culture. How dare he? All right, so I have done a little bit of planning here. I'm gonna move my Oracle City over here. 
Um, this is just a much easier city to build the Oracle in. There's lots of tiles we want to chop out. We want to get rid of these two rainforests. We'll talk about chops in a minute here. There's lots of great tiles for us to work. We're going to start with a whole bunch of food in production, which is awesome. We can settle on a Plains Hill. It gives us a good government plaza that boosts both of our theater squares. And we can put two theater squares next to the Oracle for the plus two boost instead of just the one over here. So we're kind of moving our plans a little bit. Like I said, pins aren't a commitment. They're a, they're a general kind of idea of what you're hoping for. That doesn't really change what we want to do here, right? It just moves the priority of the Oracle over here because it's a better Oracle, if that makes sense. Let's settle this city and what's its name? Aredium. We wanted to name it Mitochondria. How do you spell Mitochondria? I want to say it's like Mitochondria. One sec, Google's gonna know. It is indeed Mitochondria, but pronounced Mitochondria. Ha <laughs> ha, classic. Classic science. Always fooling us. All right, it took 45 turns. I think we've solved all of our barb issues, though. I think all these barbs are gone now. So I think we can, we can kind of live in harmony. So this card here, Corvée, is gonna be really important for us as we build our Oracle to get that extra 15% production. Is that something we're doing right now, though? No, we're still a few turns away from the Oracle, and political philosophy is in eight turns. So in eight turns, we're going to get another chance to change our policy cards. So I'm not going to put the Wonder card in now while I'm not actively building Wonders. I am building two builders, though. So what I will do is actually put in Ilkum for just a couple of turns here. As I'm getting these builders, having production towards them is really, really nice. Plus one production in all cities is good as well. But I think since I'm building builders in two of my three cities, this might work out for us just fine. We don't really need discipline anymore, but I'm not really seeing anything else that would be super helpful right now. So we'll keep discipline in just in case. I still think Magnus wouldn't be a bad pickup for a governor, but man, this is this might be one of the better Pingalas we could ever hope for if all of this planning works out. So we are going to go into Pingala here, and we are going to go Connoisseur for even more culture. That's going to give us plus one culture per turn for each citizen in the city. So in this city here, that'll be three next turn. As we move it over here, this will be three or four as well. But you always want to put Pingala in the city with Oracle um, once you get it far enough down the promotion line. All of our units can just kind of fortify and heal here until everything is better. Both Patchacuti and... It's Patchacuti. I just call him Patchacuti because he's a good looking guy. Um, both of these guys are friendly with us, so we might as well declare friendship with them now as to not make any enemies out of anyone later. We now have our first builder. There's a few different priorities we're going to go for here. We obviously want to get this Coco here. This Coco is going to help us with amenities, which we are currently short on. We don't have any Coco yet, which is awesome. We need to clear the bananas off this tile because we know we want to put a campus here. And we need to clear the rainforest off this tile because we know we want to put a commercial hub there. So that'll probably be our three priorities with our three build charges. Our first campus is down, and this campus has a plus three adjacency bonus. So for a campus, the first one that gives you a plus three, not every plus three, but the first one that gives you a plus three will give you extra error score, which is great for us. I don't think that means we're going to hit a golden age. I don't even really want to hit this golden age. We might end up doing it. I'd rather hit a regular age here if it's possible, just because there's not really a use for the golden age. But hey, it's good to have this campus down, starting to generate science for us. And as you can see, we already have more science and more culture than everyone else in the game so far and it's turn 50 so we're off to a crack and start gonna get our first coco baby Wow! that's a lot of gold for those of you who are not sure what an earth goddess tile looks like it just adds the plus two faith here so if you go to your appeal tile it has the dark green for breathtaking we own the tile and it's giving us the plus two faith just right on top of the tile there we're also not going to be able to chop rainforests or woods. Um, so woods is in mining if you want to chop out your woods tiles. If you want to chop out your bronze working tiles or your um, rainforest tiles, sorry, that's in bronze working. So I'm actually going to stop going for currency. And we're going to head into bronze working here just to make sure we can chop these tiles out um, so we can actually put stuff on these, on these tiles that we're going to chop the woods and rainforest off of. For our first government, we are currently not fighting with anyone, so oligarchy is probably not that helpful. Auto Autocracy is just usually pretty bad. Two military policy slots isn't very good. So we're going to go Classical Republic here to get our 15% Great Person points, which will be very, very helpful for us. We are still producing builders. We're going to want settlers in just a minute here. I think plus one production in all cities is great, so we'll go Ilkum and Urban Planning. 
Diplo League and Charismatic Leader. People always argue about which one of these is better, especially if you're newer to the game. Charismatic Leader is always, almost always better. It's great to have uh, consistent influence points building up towards your envoys than it is for the first envoy in each place to be boosted. I just think Charismatic Leader is so much more efficient and more reliable. And for our last wild card slot, Great Scientist points feels pretty good. Two goals from trade routes feels all right. We only have the one trade route right now. Nothing else is really tickling my fancy, so we'll go Great Scientist points. I know I don't want a religion, so I'll leave the Great Prophets up to everyone else, and we'll start ticking up some Great Scientist points. We are now ready to chop our first tile, and chopping a tile is exactly what it sounds like. So if you go and you have a builder on a tile that you can clear something off of, you can clear woods and marsh and rainforest and those types of things. You can also clear non-luxury resources. So I can get rid of the bananas on this tile or the stone on this tile. Copper is another one as well that people often get rid of. And I go to this button here, the little bulldozer. It says, remove feature, woods, right? Receives 40% or 40%. Okay, let's do that again. Remove feature, woods. Yields 43 production, removes the woods. So it gets rid of the woods on this tile. Right, if I were to just smack the oracle on top of this, I could get rid of the woods. But if I chop it out, I get that 40 production, and that production's gonna go towards whatever I am building here. So it's gonna go towards this builder here, right? So if this costs less than 47 production, and I click remove woods, I'm gonna finish building that builder, even though it still had two turns left. One of the best ways to boost the yields you get from chopping things out early on in the game is by going to your governors and getting Magnus, uh, and his first promotion, Groundbreaker, can really help with that. We made the calculated choice that Pingala was gonna be better for us this game, but it is good to know that Magnus is there. In, in the early game of Civ, you usually want to chop out everything you can, especially if you're gonna be putting stuff on top of it, right? There might be a good reason to leave uh, woods or rainforest or whatever for specific situations. But in this case, we know we wanna put an oracle here, so we'll chop it out and actually get production from it instead of just wasting that 40 production by just smacking the oracle on top. Now that we are actively building the oracle, we're gonna to wanna to head to our government the next time we get the chance. I'm gonna take out Ilkum. We are not currently producing builders. And we are producing wonders, so Corvée is going to head into that policy slot there. I have just put a plantation on our second cocoa. Now that we have two cocoa, it is good to try and find out someone to buy that second cocoa from us. It's not going to do a whole lot for us to have two of them. So we're going to head to our deal screen here. We're going to find someone who doesn't have cocoa. And we're going to click cocoa. And what would you give me? Three gold for 30 turn isn't bad for our duplicate cocoa. But let's see if we can, let's see if we can get something else here. If you don't have cocoa... Five gold for 30 turn and six gold is perfect. So Pachacuti is going to give us some gold and that'll help us tick up our gold here. So we are currently going to get five more gold per turn because we got rid of that Coco, which isn't doing much for us anyways. All right, we have another Coco tile, which is awesome for us. We're up to 28 gold per turn, which is really ridiculous for this early on in the game. So again, we're going to try and sell the Coco, right? We don't need two Coco. Sometimes it's nice to sell it for, for a thing you don't have, like cocoa for tea or something, right? But four gold for 30 turns, that'll put us up to 32 gold per turn, which is honestly a lot of gold this early on in the game. So part of why chopping is so important is it, it helps you... It helps you secure the things you really want. So in this city... I'm just gonna chop this tile because I know I want to put a commercial hub here and I use the chop towards a granary That's pretty whatever, but Oracle is critical Absolutely critical to what we're doing here, right? And so we want to make sure that we chop these two tiles This is the best of all worlds I need to chop these two tiles because I need these tiles to put a campus and a theater square on These are both rainforests which are giving negative a appeal to all the tiles around them once i get rid of these two forests we're gonna have a few more earth goddess tiles which is fantastic right but also how many turns is it going to take off the oracle it took a few turns off the oracle just two but it's still something right and so so shaving those turns off the oracle can be really really helpful for us you want to be careful when you are building... We built a plantation under this volcano. Just because if the volcano erupts again, we might have to come back and actually um, rebuild the plantation if the volcano erupts on it. 
All right, we just finished up currency. So we are gonna start building a commercial hub here. The commercial hub, the great merchant points from the commercial hub are not that important, but getting a extra trade route. We are gonna need one trade route to everyone in this game for cultural reasons we'll talk about later, right? But gold and trade routes are very important to establish relationships and to keep your economy going in this game. Do not underestimate how important um, early commercial hubs are in your cities to help you kind of get a foothold in the game, get your economy going and establish good relationships with your um, neighbors and friends if you're if you're trying not to kill them if you're trying to kill them just do whatever you want um, but in this game we're trying to be peaceful so these commercial hubs and the traders go a long way to help with that one of the best features in the game that a lot of people don't know about is actually the search feature so if i want to find out where all the iron is at, i can just search iron it only search the tiles you can see but there's only two iron tiles and they'll highlight them in white for us there's one by jadviga down there and one all the way up here by a cod that it doesn't look like we're going to get. So unless we settle the city right up here, which we might want to do, um, it looks like this iron is, is pretty out of reach for us, which is unfortunate. Now, I've built a mine on these diamond tiles because I do want to collect the diamonds. It does give negative appeal, though. So as you can see, the appeal to these tiles is really bad now. All the tiles are round the mine so i want to try and avoid building mines as much as possible in this game the only exception i'm making is for the diamonds which i would like to collect for amenities or for trading to the ai we definitely want pingala to start giving us more science per turn as well which is awesome now that pingala is kind of finished up and the oracle is about to be done it's probably time to move pingala over to mitochondria to be ready for that it is good to note though that when you move pingala you actually lose the science and culture per turn that it was giving you as pingala moves over so we're in for five turns now of less culture per turn and less science per turn because of that with, we with have the built the oracle <laughs> this is a huge also, moment himself. this is a huge Both moment things. in our culture victory game here to have the oracle done and dusted and ready to go combined with pingala we are going to produce so many great person points out of the city it's going to be ridiculous and very very helpful because great people are how we're going to acquire a lot of things we need for a culture victory we have acquired our first great scientist all right so you can see here as people are ticking through the game you can see how many people are earning what great person points per turn for instance towards a great general persia is earning one great general point per turn towards a great profit an unmet player is earning 1.1 1 .1. we're earning 4.6 great scientist points per turn and so we have acquired this first great scientist here libraries provide plus one science instantly builds a library in this district that is huge for us it's a great early scientist to get us going just because a great uh, person exists does not mean you want to recruit every time but in this case this is a very very good great scientist for us to have we are going to immediately start with a theater square here we want to start ticking up all of the culture great person points we need all right and we are going to do that in the city with pingala and with oracle first so as you can see i prioritize not theater squares here we went for a campus first here we went for a commercial hub first but in the city where it matters the most for the great person points we are going to need we are going for a culture win so we're going for a theater square first Jad Vega's gonna settle in the middle of a drought. Have fun with this garbage land. I have decided we're kind of gonna head up towards universities first. We're gonna have a couple good campuses that we're gonna wanna build universities in. Also, that is a boost for printing is to build two universities. So we might as well at least try to achieve that. Gives us more time to boost everything along the way to printing as well, which is definitely where we wanna go. As you can see too, now that we have the Oracle, we are collecting tourism or our civilization has tourism tourism is really important and combined with culture tourism is going to be how we attract tourists to our empire which is how you win a culture game so now we're finally at the point in the game where we can discuss how we're going to close this game out let's head to culture here right to achieve a culture victory you must attract visiting tourists by generating high amounts of culture and tourism Victory is achieved when you attract more visiting tourists to your civilization than any other civilization has domestic tourists at home. Basically, we want to make our empire nice and big and pretty. So people want to come visit us. They want to come on vacation. And once everyone else is on vacation in our empire, we're so amazing that we win the game, right? And so we currently have zero visitors. 
from any other place, which is totally fine. We're just starting to tick up in tourism. We're just starting to tick up in culture as well. But you can see the visiting tourists there and how much you need to win. So we need zero or we need nine visiting tourists to win and we have zero, right? Cyrus needs seven. Right? So there's always going to be a bunch of people that need the same amount and one that needs less. We'll talk about why later when we're the one that needs less. But for now, this screen is good to familiarize yourself with. You just go to World Rankings, and then instead of Overall, you actually click on Culture, and there you are. This is also where our trade routes and open borders come in really, really handy. If we go to our visitors from Cyrus, right? It says Tourism 3... Tourism Lifetime 3, overall tourism reduced 0% for different governments. So we have the same government that he does, so we are not losing tourism to him. If we have a trade route for him, though, it'll say here plus 25% for a trade route, if that makes sense. So it's really, really important um, for trade routes and open borders. We'll come look at this screen again when it's a little more fleshed out, but all of your boosts... Uh, and negative effects towards tourism will appear right here in the Our Visitors From screen. And you can hover over these little briefcases to see what is affecting your tourism output to each individual civilization. Now that we are generating tourism and we want to have open borders with everyone, we're actually going to head here and trade for open borders and make sure that's all good to go. Don't just trade straight up, though. Oftentimes, if you click the gold per turn here and say make this deal more equitable, they will actually offer you a little bit of money for open borders. So everyone wins. Now that we have done that with everyone, if we head back to this culture victory screen and hover over these briefcases, you can see it says overall tourism boosted plus 25% for open borders. So already right away, the first second we can, the first turn in the game we can, we are boosting the amount of tourism we can achieve via having open borders with these sieves, which is why you need to be friendly with them early on in the game, because we're already reaping the rewards on turn 68 from being friendly with all these other sieves. Open borders with everyone also allows you to go into their territory here and like see what they're up to, which is really nice. The more of the map you can see, the more things come up when you search. So if you want to see if someone's building the Eiffel Tower, Right, no one is going to be at this stage of the game. And you search, it'll only search within tiles you can see. So kind of running your units through the empires of all the other civs in the game to see what they're building is really, really helpful. I'm going to go for a bit of a change of pace here. I'm actually going to head to construction first instead of going straight to education. Construction allows me to build lumber mills on woods tiles. Now, I do want to clear away all the rainforests because they give negative appeal, but all of these wood tiles give positive appeal. So I want to keep them around instead of clearing them. And I'm feeling a little bit of a lack of production in the capital right now. So if I can get lumber mills on these two tiles, that's a good way for me to get a little bit of production in there, but without sacrificing any appeal in the the process now that we have this commercial hub here i can remove the pin go for the market right away because i want that extra trade route trade routes to people give us more tourism not more tourism but it helps us bring more tourists in which we desperately need so the second we can get more trade routes the better we are about to produce a lot more settlers so we want this colonization card to synergize with the 50 percent production we get from ancestral hall in our government plaza so we want this to go just nicely in here instead of the wonder building still want inspiration there's nothing else that's really huh, inspiring me there's nothing else we really need so might as well keep ticking up some great scientist points great writer points is also really good i'm actually going to switch them I'm going to switch Great Writer points for great, scienti great Scientist points. We're ticking up both anyway now that our Amphitheater is almost done. But getting Great Writer points is more helpful for a culture win. Also, once we hit printing, the amount of tourism we get for great works of writing goes up. So this is probably a better choice for us. Otherwise, I'm still happy with this, even though it's not perfect up in this economic policy area. So our trade route with Nan Medal is finished. We got our road. We got our envoy. We do not lose the envoy if we do not go back to Nan Medal. So I will immediately start sending this trade route to Cyrus. The reason why I want to go to Cyrus first is because he's the most likely. Actually, that's a lie. Pachacuti is killing it with culture right now. Let's head to Wanuku. We're going to head to Wanuku. Um, I want to start trying to take tourists away from the, the Civ that's most likely to win a culture game. And it looks like right now that's Pachacuti. So let's begin a trade route with Wanuku there from Rome. We'll build a road through here, which is nice. But now, if we go to our culture victory screen and we hover over Pachacuti, 
We have plus 25% for open borders, but an additional plus 25% for the trade route. So we want open borders with everyone and trade routes with everyone at all times. At all times. The whole game, open borders, trade routes, all the time with everyone. It is now time for what I call settler spamming. We will be building like six settlers in Rome back to back to back to back to back. Um, this city here, Mitochondria, again, is the powerhouse of the empire. This city is going to do a lot of the legwork with our science and culture and getting our yields up. I do have a plan for this gold. Don't worry, I have not gone insane. We are going to spend this gold that I am collecting here, right? So now that we have the government plaza here that has the Ancestral Hall that gives us bonus settler production. I have the bonus settler production card in. We can produce settlers very, very quickly in Rome and we're gonna go back to back to back to back and we're gonna settle the rest of our empire, as much of it by turn 100 as possible. Grants it with Pingala is exactly what we want to synergize with our Oracle. Plus 100% great person points in this city combines with the extra great person points the Oracle gives you for a huge boost for us in the great person uh, game here. Scotland. Scotland is in the game. That was a terrible Scottish accent, but hello. Scotland typically goes for a science victory, so I'm not too worried about them culturally. They have a culture right now. They're also not really killing it in the science game, but they're not too far behind either. Oh, actually, again, we want to be friends with everyone. Send delegation. Declare friendship. Scotland's not ready for that yet. He doesn't want to hold hands just yet. Doesn't want a little cuddle, but that's fine. We are going to go open borders, though, right away. Every time. He wants me to give him gold? That's fine. That's fine. The open borders right away is worth so much for us in terms of collecting tourists. So our plan in mitochondria here involves all the gold. So we could build an amphitheater here, which takes nine turns, or I can purchase it with our gold, which will have enough gold in about four turns here. So I save five turns on the amphitheater by buying it with gold, thus getting our great writer points clicking faster. Combined with Pingala and Oracle, it's gonna be a lot of great writer points. In the meantime, I can build this campus that I really, really want. This will be a plus three campus here, right? And once this campus is done, I automatically can build a library in it with this great scientist. So I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds with my amphitheater and my campus here by, by buying the amphitheater and by building the campus instead of building the amphitheater right after that. So saving the gold was part of the strategy. So we have just met Babylon and Babylon has a really cool unique bonus, plus two science from each great work of writing, plus one science from each relic and artifact. So we know just by virtue of having great writer points ticking up that we're gonna have quite a few great works of writing, especially with the culture victory in mind. Right, so Babylon becomes one of those city-states like, hey, if we can suzerain Babylon, this unique bonus is very good for us. So it's good as these things happen to keep them in mind, because next time my envoys come up, I might seriously consider Babylon as an option. So as you can see here, we are collecting 11.5 great writer points per turn. 11.5. And our, um, what's it called? Our card gives us two, so that we're down to 9.5. Right, and how much does the amphitheater give us here? How much does an amphitheater give you? Just straight up, just a naked amphitheater. Plus one. Plus one, right? So we have three out of 11.5 are coming in through actual means of getting them. The other seven or so are coming in through Pingala and through Oracle. So we're already reaping the rewards of this choice we made to prioritize Oracle and the theater square here. Last promotion for Pingala will be Curator, plus 100% tourism from great works of art, music, and writing in the city, which is awesome, because we are about to get a few great works of writing going right into Mitochondria, so boosting that tourism right away the first minute we can in the game is a great policy for us to have. Here is our first great writer. So we are going to take Ku Yuan here, and we are going to recruit Ku Yuan. We know we are getting a plus 100% tourism in this city from great works of writing. So we're gonna want Jadviga, can you, I'm trying to talk to people right now. Okay, Jadviga, 
Uh, we're going to create the great work in this amphitheater here. Now, as you get your great works, you're going to want to pay attention to this screen here. We can go over theming bonuses and whatnot later, but it is just important to know this will tell you where you can and cannot put your great works as you collect great people. Campus is done. That is our recorded history boost right as we're going for it, which is awesome. We are going to use this great scientist here to build the library and to give both of our libraries an extra plus one science. So that was great for us. Now we have some decisions to make. Let me think about it for a minute and I will get back to you on what we're gonna do in mitochondria. At this point, because we don't have Magnus, I'm actually gonna build just one. I'm actually gonna build one settler here. We need to get our cities established as soon as possible. And while it's not going to be as quick as Rome, getting one settler here is fine. The reason why I don't wanna produce more than one settler here is because I don't want to keep losing population in this city. But I think building one settler is gonna be fine for us to get our cities established. I'm gonna use this gold to buy a builder in Rome to get the lumber mills we were talking about. We still have a few things we're gonna to wanna to clear in Kumai. So we'll probably use the gold to grab some builders and we'll just build one settler here to help us establish some of these cities a little bit quicker in the game and get us snowballing towards a victory here. So part of why getting Ancestral Hall before you build all your settlers is nice is because they come with a builder, which is awesome. And so now we can come right away, right after we built our city and grab these horses first. Just look at that. So you don't even need to grab the builders in your new cities if you get your government plaza with Ancestral Hall first. For those of you who aren't aware how swapping tiles work, Mitochondria currently owns this commercial hub tile. If I go to Mitochondria, I can see that it owns this tile that I wanna put the commercial hub on. If I go to Ostia, if I click on this little face, this managed citizen's face here, and I click swap, that tile now belongs to me and I can start working on this commercial hub here. Now that we have a card that is better than urban planning, we're gonna sub this out. Giving natural philosophy a drag into this slot here is going to give us plus, what is that, six science per turn right now, which is great. And as we build more campuses this game, it's gonna give us more science per turn. We already have like 30% more science than everyone else in this game just by building two good campuses, which is awesome. So we're just gonna extend that lead and keep the snowball effect going. This is a much better card than having the um, plus one production in all cities in. Yeah, I went 36 to 44. Now we're almost, we're double most people. We're actually double everyone in the game, at least double. We are done with Pingala now, which is nice. The next kind of obvious pick is Magnus for the chop ability of our tiles. So let's grab Magnus. There are lots of tiles we are going to want to chop. Um, which city is most likely? Probably Rome. A lot of chops here too, a lot of chops in Rome. Let's go to Rome because we're about to buy a builder in Rome anyway. So regardless of better, what better, regardless of whether or not we can boost everything along the way, I think our best path right now is just straight to humanism. We need art museums. We need to start collecting great works of art. You want to start having a whole, you want to have like the museum collection of the world before anyone else can even get into the game with great works. And so we are going to start doing that now. I think our next city just comes and slides in right here. I'm more inclined to settle the geothermal fissure than I am to settle on the rainforest. Uh, settling the geothermal fissure actually makes something useful out of what is otherwise a bad tile. It gives good campus adjacency here, so this would be a plus four campus right here, plus five once we put a commercial hub here. So we'll, we'll pin this out and I'll explain it again a little bit later. Right, so I think settling the fissure is great, and I also puts us within a couple tiles of this iron. Now, if a cod gets a few more envoys put into it, it might take the iron. We don't need the iron, but I think just coming right up here, it's a nice, quick, easy jaunt up here, and it's a city we can settle relatively quickly, so I think we'll do that. I'm actually going to pin that out to make sure that I don't forget anything. So we're going to settle here. This is a plus four campus. Settling on the fissure doesn't make the fissure go away, so it's plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Plus five once it's next to two districts. So it'll be a plus five campus. And then you can throw a theater square here, which will be a plus one theater square for being next to both of these districts here. And that's just a base plan, but I think that's a good little city for us there. It's always good to double check your trade routes every once in a while. You're gonna have to renew your open borders. Also, we have our cocoa back. This cocoa trade only lasted for three or 30 turns. So we're just gonna retrade our cocoa to make sure it's always out there collecting money for us every step of the way. 
I really did want a builder up here, but the trader is so important to start collecting um, tourists from the other sieve. So we wanted that plus, the plus bonus towards tourism is much better than a few lumber mills at this point in the game. Like I said, it, it sometimes it feels really bad to have like an 18 turn theater square. Turn 100 is kind of where you want to be set up. And we are already well set up for this game. And so we just need to continue to establish ourselves. Once you pass turn 100 is where you really start driving home the victory. And so I feel pretty good about where we're at for turn 88 right now. I'm going to send this trade route to pass our gate. It doesn't really matter which city I send the trade route to in each civ. As long as the trade route is going to each civilization, it doesn't matter which city. So we are now getting that boost from pass our gate. Or for Cyrus from pass our gate. If we go to all our culture screen, we can verify that, that we are indeed um, getting the boost, plus 25% for trade route, plus 25% for open borders. And you can just check here to make sure everything is good. We still haven't met Australia yet, which is strange. I can see Sydney. We have another great, right? We don't have anywhere to put this. We don't have anywhere to put the great writers. I'm going to recruit them anyway, but they're just going to sleep. We have nowhere to put them yet. We're getting there. We're trying hard. We're trying really hard, I swear. Magnus is established here. It's really important that you actually wait for Magnus to be established or else the chop won't give you a little extra boost. But we will chop out that granary here, which is awesome. And then we can throw down... Ooh, Toa's nice. I'm not used to Toa still being available at this point in the game. But now we can chuck down a plus four campus here, which is going to be really, really great for us. Now we've officially met Australia. My man. Welcome. But just like everyone else immediate delegation for friendliness immediate open borders they want us to give them 13 gold unacceptable all right now's a great time to also check that our open borders with everyone else is still alive yes indeed it is which is awesome you just want to keep track of that to make sure you're you're on the right track I think I'm going to settle on the olives here. The olives are a really bad tile to work for us, so there's no reason to really work the olives. If I settle on them, I still get them towards my amenities anyway, which is great, and I can still trade them. And so that's not a bad settle there. Kind of takes these tiles away from Nan Madal. It's not the best settle ever, but it's kind of what we're working with here, so I feel pretty good about settling right on top of the olives. Now, what do you do with this builder is another question. This is a really good farm triangle. Right, farm, farm, farm. If you put three farms together in a triangle, each farm in that triangle gets better. So we'll probably start working on that. Australia is getting destroyed by Patch of Cutie. That's a rough look. That's a tough look, my guy. I apologize. That sucks. That's not, it's not what you want. Patch of Cutie would like our horses to help kill Australia. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. That's not a bad, that's not a bad deal. Triggers the Eureka moment for one random tech for the medieval or renaissance era wound. Yeah, this is more combat based. This is not the best great scientist for us, so I'm going to pass. We'll wait for the next one. As you are playing through this type of game and you're collecting faith, we don't really have much to spend our faith on right now. So it is really good for us to see the, which great people we can buy. Now, this great merchant increases trade route capacity by one. We can buy out this great merchant for 255 faith, which is great. We'll get a trade route. Even if it's just a few turns earlier, it starts collecting the, the citizens from the other territories for us to win this culture game. So I'm going to buy this great merchant here. And it boosted mercantilism. That, that part was an accident, but we'll take it. We are also two era score over a golden age, which is still around 10 turns left. And so you definitely want to make sure that you don't actively try and get much more era score because it doesn't overlap and go into the next era. So we're already in a golden age. We kind of want to slow down on era score from this point until the end of this era, if, if we can. We have made it to education now, so we have universities. The next thing we're going to head do is straight towards printing, which will give us double the tourism from great works of writing, which as you can see by what we have and the amount of great writers we have just waiting for a space to put their great works. We have so many great works of writing, all giving us double tourism will feel really, really good for us. Because we are going to get a free trade route that I wasn't expecting from this great merchant that we just acquired, I'm actually going to prioritize the university here. We're going to need two universities to boost towards um printing i think it's called printing right we just talked about this we just talked about this either way i'm gonna have about as many trade routes as i expected so I'll, I'll i'll not focus on the commercial hub right away even though we can build it now i'll focus more on the university instead 
All right, so we are at turn 100 here. This was the first 100 turns of a culture game. Now let's recap where we are. Is this where we want to be? Are we set up for success? And is this where we want to, is this where we want to go? Is this the platform we need to win this culture game? So just base statistics, we are ahead of everybody else in science and double most people, obviously a great spot to be. We are ahead of everyone in culture and double everyone else. Obviously a great spot to be, right? Could these numbers be better? Probably, um, but still great spot to be. We have a lot of gold income, which is awesome for us. Our faith income is good enough for what we need. And we have all this Diplo favor here, which we are gonna do stuff with. I'm just not sure exactly what yet. So we might sell it. We might use it for the correct um, governments as they come up through the whatever it's called. I can't I can never remember what it's called But either way, we'll use the Diplo favor. It's a good place to be there We have mitochondria here the powerhouse of the Empire This Oracle Pingala setup is gonna work wonders for us You can see it already is with all the great writers we're collecting. We just need spots to put them in. So I think we're doing really, really well towards a culture victory. We have open borders and are friendly with everyone. We're about to have trade routes with mostly everyone. So I think we're really in a good spot here. There's a few things I wanna talk about. So I talked about the first 100 turns being a a kind of establishment set of turns. You're trying to establish your empire so it's ready to go, so in the next 100 turns you can kind of go and win the game, which is exactly what we wanna do. So in that establishment we have one, two, three, four, five, six cities with a seventh and an eighth right along the way here. We probably wanna push that to 10, so we're still gonna do a little bit of establishing in the next couple of turns here, but it's totally fine because Rome is not our most important city. Mitochondria is killing it. Um, Kumai is starting to get built up here as well. Lugdunum is starting to put some good districts down, so we don't need Rome to really do a whole lot for us. They can just keep spamming settlers out and that is really awesome for our empire. So I'm feeling good about where we're at expansion-wise. We're really gonna focus in the next couple of turns, getting down our districts, getting down our great person points, putting our great works into their slots. You can see we have so many great writers here just itching for a place to write their books. But I hope that that's a good kind of example of what the first 100 turns looks like. What you will notice that I wanna really emphasize is you do not need everything in every city. Right, we are not building industrial zones. We are not building entertainment complexes. We have not built a single holy site yet. A lot of people kind of lose focus. Civ can be a sprawling game. And one of the main takeaways from the first 100 turns here is we're established. We've got districts that we need. We need campuses, we need theater squares, we need commercial hubs, we do not need industrial zones, we do not need entertainment complexes, we do not need holy sites. We might need them in the future, in which case we can build them then, but for right now we have what we need, we're establishing what we need, and we're not really going too far out of those um, bounds, which is awesome. We scouted a good chunk of the land, the open borders really helps us with that, so we know exactly which cities we can settle and where we can settle them and what they'll give us when we do so we are in a really good spot i am going to put this video on youtube before i film the next couple of turns i really just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to ask questions and to kind of see where they're at so if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i'd love to hear from you guys if you enjoyed this video definitely hit the like and subscribe button i would really appreciate it otherwise thank you so much for watching i can't wait to close out this culture game with you guys in the next episode where we will tackle turns 100 to turns 150 or so thanks guys